I gave a presentation on reduced migration of a subset of dendritic cells called Langerhans cells. And these cells are present only in the upper, upper skin. Uh, so many patients with lupus, uh, lupus develop a skin disease in the form of dermatitis and some patients develop disfigurement because of this dermatitis. There is no known mechanism for the development of dermatitis. My laboratory has identified a new mechanism of lupus dermatitis whereby mice with lupus have reduced migration of these dendritic cells from your skin to your skin draining lymph nodes. In the beginning, we had expected that these cells will be increased in draining lymph node, but our data were exactly opposite. These dendritic cells normally take information from your skin to your skin draining lymph node where they talk to other immune cells like T cells and B cells and basically tell them not to react against one's own skin. Okay. We believe this reduced migration of these cells, these dendritic cells, basically result in the reduced training of T cells. So T cells becomes activated and they start reacting against the skin. What we found that in normal animals, my animals that do not develop lupus, these cells go from your skin to your skin draining lymph node and they basically silence T cells. In lupus mice, these cells were not going to your skin draining lymph node and so T cells were not getting training, they were becoming activated and these activated T cells then they come to your skin and they react against your skin and they cause inflammation. Basically, there are different types of T cells. There are some T cells that suppress inflammation and these are, we, call, we can call them good T cells in the context of lupus and autoimmune disease and they are bad T cells that will, we also call, call them as effector T cells. They basically go to organs such as the skin or kidneys in patients with lupus and they cause damage. So in our situation that I described, these cells that are activated by these dendritic cells are good T cells and they do, they do so in normal individuals but in lupus patients these T cells, these good T cells are not trained well to do their job that is to suppress the bad T cells. We have also found that a lipid, basically it is a gly glycolipid uh, that can activate this migration process. So we have found that mice after injection with this glycolipid have increased migration of these dendritic cells from your skin to your skin draining lymph node and we find that just one single injection of this glycolipid can suppress skin inflammation or lupus dermatitis in mice. Uh, at present, right, this is a very new finding that, that we have described that dendritic cells from, do not move from skin to skin draining lymph node. Now we are collecting uh, samples, that is skin biopsies from patients with lupus and seeing whether a similar defect occurs in patients with lupus. Once we identify that the, lup the dendritic cells do not migrate out of, his skin, uh, out of patients' skin, the next step will be to find out whether adding this lipid in, in cultures uh, will induce migration. Once that, happen, uh, that happens, then we will we'll explore ways whether this, uh, these, glyco these or similar glycolipids can be used to treat patients to suppress lupus skin disease. In fact, these glycolipids have been used in patients with cancer with some positive effect. So there's already uh, examples where, uh, where these glycolipids can be used and we have to optimize this for lupus patients. And this will take, so for, but before we can actually consider the treatment, we first have to define whether a similar defect, defect that we found in mouse uh, also exists in humans. Once that happens, this is a, a potentially very exciting area because glycolipids can be, um, can be easily used. There's already examples of use of glycolipids in, 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 other, in cancers and other situations. The, the first step that we have already begun, we have collected so far skin biopsies from five patients. We will need to do at least 15, 20 uh, biopsies from patients who are willing to give a small piece of their skin 
as well as the skin biopsy from controlling from healthy individuals and then determine the capacity of uh, these dendritic cells to migrate out of the skin. So that will be the first step. Second step will be to develop ways to test uh, this migration potential and whether these glycolipids can be, uh, can be used to affect that. We have set up these experiments in mouse skin. We will have to see whether the same experiment that we have optimized for mice also work for humans, for, from, from, for patients.